expecting a blessing from you, God. We come with our, our hearts wide open, our minds ready to receive your word. But we come to give you praise, God. And Lord, as I thank you now on those that are experiencing COVID right now, I pray for all those that have lost someone due to COVID, yeah. those that are even experiencing COVID right now, God. Yeah. Lord, we know you to be a healer, God, a protector, and a provider. So God, I pray that you minister to those families that are going through as only you can. And now, God, we ask you to take control of this service. Lead and guide in the way you have to go. Bless our pastor right now as he's preparing the word for your people. And Lord, I pray that the people have our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. If there's anyone in the house today that don't have a relationship with you, God, I pray through the preaching of the gospel. They'll receive you as Lord and see you say this today. Bless our choirs that are going to sing. Bless our musicians. And bless everyone on the sound of my voice. Lead and guide our time together. And we'll forever give you honor, glory, and praise. For you're worthy of it all. Bless in Jesus' name we pray.
and he's here in his right mind. Walk up here. No, no physical maladies, no problems, no problems. Because listen, when you stop breathing, you lose oxygen to the brain. So that's right, he really should have some brain issues, but Okay, listen, tell somebody around you. I don't know how much more proof you need. I don't know. What you say, Timmy? What you say? I've been privy 
appreciate you show them. But since you may allow them on the outside to enter, you may do so if there are any. I want to give a few observations before we will go into our service of communion. Again, our church school has uh, reconvened. We thank God for our teachers doing an awesome job this morning teaching the word of God. But we're praying that our members will come to Sunday school each Sunday morning beginning at 10, excuse me, at 9 a.m. And we will go until 10. We will do our morning worship at 10, 15, because we need an hour of good instruction. Amen. And I want to uh, uh, beseech all of you. We're living in such a time where we need the word of God. So we need to come and get the word of God. Study your lessons weekly, because again, it is not our teacher's job to lecture you. They are there to teach you. We're there to learn from one another. But we're asking that you will please, ma'am, please, sirs, come out Wednesday night as well. 10 a.m. We're having Bible study. We are talking about signs of light. We're talking about dusty shoes, the relevant life of the Christian. So I hope and pray that you will come. We had an awesome first session on last Wednesday. I was, I was really blessed by both of the sessions. We ask that you will come. Our youth as well come and learn what the Lord is saying in this season for your life. So we pray that you will do that. Also, we do have those services by way of Facebook, but don't let that be an excuse for you not to come. Amen. We want to do that. So again, come out and share with us. Home going services for Sister Minnie Ellis will be on Saturday, 
at 10, excuse me, oh, I keep saying 10 o'clock, 3 o'clock at Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. She'll be funeralized there. The uh, quiet time will be at 2.30 until 3 o'clock. So if you desire to go and share with that family, you can do so. The outreach ministry has been collecting. You've seen uh, these uh, containers in both the four-year area and our vestibule area, as well as throughout the education building. You can certainly uh, donate items. We're going to be taking items to hospice by October the 1st. But also we're doing some things on you know, every first Wednesday. We're, uh, of course, uh, doing the We Care Ministry, taking items to those who are homebound and those, of course, who are infirm. If you have any questions regarding this, please see Deaconess Tasha Watkins and she will help you with any information that you so desire. Us, you may allow them on the outside to enter. Also, Jersey Day, it is football season. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hey man, y'all played well Thursday. Y'all played well. Let me just put it out there. Y'all did. Y'all played well. I was, I was, I'm serious. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm being serious. It was so good to see Dak Prescott back on the field. And he played. Amen. Amen. And I, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm telling the truth. Uh, it's hard, but I got to say <laughs> Y'all offense is going to be something to reckon with. Everybody stay healthy. Let's try to tell you. But I hope it don't. <laughs> if I can't live with y'all, let me do. <laughs> I can't live with y'all. I got to go on sabbatical. That's what I got to do. <laughs> but because, you know, every year we do this. We do it several times a year. Fourth Sunday is going to be Jersey Day. Represent your team. We're going to do that on fourth Sunday. So again, to, uh, we're going to do that, have a, have a, a let down or whatever. So again, we want to do that on fourth Sunday uh, this month. So you can represent your team or your favorite college team, all of that. Yeah, my Bucks took a lump on yesterday. We had a tough day. We got duck walked on yesterday. That's just how it is. But nevertheless, fourth Sunday be Jersey Day. Uh, continue, continue to be praying for so many of our members that are dealing with so many various things. We're lifting them up in prayer. Also, our youth, our schools, of course, all of those that are dealing with COVID-19. Let's remember them in prayer as well. Remember, my sister Joanne Jackson, who is at home. Amen. She came over. To <laughs> sister Dorothy Montgomery, Brother Benny Fambo. Remember Mother Pauline Mooney. Remember Brother Ernest and Joanne Hopper. Remember them as well. And Deacon Benta, uh, Deacon Letcher Brown, and him his father, as well as Miss Karen. And so many others that may have came to my mind this morning, but we know who they are, Sister Anna Price and others. Let's remember them in prayer this week uh, as we continue to move forward in this season and remember all of the victims and the families of uh, September 11th. Yesterday marked 20 years. So let's remember those families that are still dealing with that tragedy that happened some 20 years ago. Let's remember them as well. We're now going to, oh, one, one other thing too. I, I've been convicted about something this week and I want to stand and share this with you. Uh, I would ask that you would indulge me this morning, those who are on duty. One of the things that I was convicted with this week is not all of us are getting the word. And I stood in this pulpit last week and even stood Wednesday and I, I said that I refuse to allow you all to be spiritually ignorant over spiritual matters. And I was convicted this week of that statement and I was convicted for allowing us to not get the word as we should. And I was asked the question, is the word more important or the business of the church more important? While both have significance, but really the word is more important. And many of you officers have came to me at the end of the worship service and stated that, man, I wish I could have heard the sermon today. Or I'll get it by way of CD or I'll get it on Facebook. And that just convicted me this week because we all need the word together. So in light of that, this morning, I'm going to preach first and then we're going to lift the offering. Now I do understand that it's going to 
put our offices with a little bit of a delay, and I would ask that you wives be patient as they do what they have to do. But I'm so serious about you all getting the word. I'm so serious. So again, indulge me. We're going to see how this goes. And, but So as your pastor, I apologize for that. And I thank God for the conviction. I thank God for that. And so again, we're going to do communion. And then we're going to go into the word. And then we're going to uh, lift our offering. And then I'm going to give the benediction because you're not going to leave without the blessing. What good is it to get the word and you leave the blessing? The blessing is in the benediction. And then I'm asking all officers to go down and count, get through what you got to do, and then go on to the crib. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's how we're going to do it. That way, nobody is left without the word. Amen, somebody. So those who were not here last week, as we move into our service of communion, I would ask that you would just raise your hand if you were not here last week and you desire to have communion. Amen. Thank you. Sister Woody will serve you. If our musicians will play something appropriate this song. Ushers, you may allow them on the outside to him.
pray that you'll consecrate their bodies. Bless this wafer, bless this juice that represents your body and your blood. We thank you as we shall now die together. In your name we pray. Amen. On that night, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the upper room of his disciples, he took bread that night. He said, this is my body, which is being broken for you. Eat ye all of it. Likewise, that same night, he took the cup. He said, this is my blood, which is being shed for you. Without the shedding of blood, there cannot be any remission for sin. Drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. Father, again now, we thank you for this awesome moment. We have now taken in your body and your blood into our bodies and bloodstream. Now, Lord, allow the scripture to be fulfilled in our lives on this week as we shall go forth into a world that doesn't know you. Allow us, God, to bear the mark of the Holy Spirit. Allow us to love ye one another. We thank you. We love you. And we bless you. It's in your name we pray. Let your heart say amen. And thank God. God bless you. Come on, put your hands together and give him a praise, will you? Brother Baxter, good to see you, my man. God bless you. Miranda, God bless you. Good to see all of you. If you'll stand this morning, open your Bibles to the 13th chapter of the book of St. Matthew. on last week. We want to conclude it on today so as the Lord shall lead us. I want to read it again from the message translation beginning at verse number 24. told another story. God's kingdom is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. That night while the hired men were asleep, his enemies sowed thistles all through the week and slipped away before dawn. When the first green shoots appeared and the grain began to form, the thistles showed up too. The farmhands came to the farmer and said, Master, that was clean seed you planted, wasn't it? Where did these thistles come from? He answered, some enemy did this. The farmhands asked, should we seed out, weed out the thistles? He said, no, if you weed the thistles, you'll pull up the wheat too. Let them grow together until harvest time. Then I'll instruct the harvesters to pull up the thistles and tie them in bundles for the fire. Then gather the wheat and put them in the barn. This is God's word for the people of God. You may take your seats. With certainly your prayers and certainly the aid of the Holy Spirit this morning, I want to preach again from this thought. An enemy have done this. An enemy hath done this. Have you ever given thought of the angels that are listed in the Word of God? Among the angels that are listed, only three of them are named. There is Gabriel, course is the messenger angel. Gabriel normally gets his name mentioned around Christmas time. 
because it was Gabriel that came and gave the message to both Elizabeth and Mary. Also, there is Michael. Michael, who is the chief prince of the heavenly. You'll find his name in the book of Jude, that little small book before Revelation, where it says that Jude doth dare not raise accusation against the devil. Michael is the war angel. But then there is Lucifer. Lucifer is the third angel that is listed in the Bible. Lucifer, ladies and gentlemen, was an anointed cherub. He was created by God to do a specific job in the heavenlies. And he was there to collect all of the praise and give that praise and lay it at the feet of God. But you Bible readers know, and of course through Isaiah chapter 14, around verse 12, that there was one day that Lucifer got a little trouble because Lucifer was beautiful, he was gifted, he was smart, he was anointed, but Lucifer had eye trouble because one day he walking by a mirror, saw how beautiful he was and said, hey, I should be getting all of this praise and not God. So what Lucifer did, Lucifer began to plan an insurrection. In his mind, January 6th began to happen. Insurrection day. And he began to attend not only to stop the steal, but create the steal. Because he himself decided that I will overthrow God from his throne. But his plan was quickly identified and it was foiled. And because his plan was foiled, Lucifer was dismissed missed out of heaven so quickly that Jesus even himself admitted that I saw Lucifer fall as lightning. He fell quickly from heaven down to earth, thus Lucifer's name was changed. Lucifer, who was the prince, now became public enemy number one to God. And you will know that this once anointed holy cherub named Lucifer now has many names. Well, He's called Satan, Reverend Wilson. He's called Satan some 52 times in scripture. Well, He's also called Beelzebub, Lord of Flies. He's called the Tempter. He's called the Accuser. He's called the Ruler of Demons. He's called a Liar, a Murderer. The ruler of this world is called the evil one, but more importantly, we know him as the devil. He is a slanderer. He is the enemy to all of those who are for the Lord. And all of these names describe these, this entity, and he is in this world today. And he has one simple agenda for the people of God. The first thing that the devil wants to do to you and I, he wants to keep you insensitive to spiritual matters. The second thing he wants to do, he wants to keep you immature. He wants to keep you from growing in the things of God. But then number three, he wants to impair your vision. He wants to cloud your ability for you to see. The devil is like a spitting cobra in Africa. A spitting cobra does not bite its victims, but rather he spits venom in an upward fashion. He's trying to get that venom in their eyes. And the reason why many folk can't see, they've been hanging around too many spitting cobras. <laughs> that wants to impair your vision. But the fourth thing that Satan wants to do, he wants to keep you ignorant to his intentions. That's what he wants to do. He wants to keep you and I ignorant, but Paul said it in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, lest Satan should gain advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. That word devices in Greek means his schemes, and you will know that the devil that you and I have to deal with is the master of illusion. He is a master schemer. Oh yeah, the devil is somebody not to play with because if you can persuade a third of the angels to leave heaven where God is, oh yeah, you got some game to you, baby. And he is the 
personification of evil and chaos and destruction that has befallen this present age. Again, he's the master of illusion. He's an imposter. He's a counterfeit. And he is the antithesis of everything that is good. Beloved, this is why we must be aware of this devil who is like a chameleon. Like a chameleon. You know, like you, like myself, like you, you have geckos around your house. I wish I had somebody. You got little lizards around your house. And I was walking in my garage the other day, and lo and behold, uh, there are some flowers, there are some little plant, artificial plants that Sister Howard has put out there in the back. And I looked there, and I saw something move on there, it kind of startled me. And lo and behold, it was a green lizard looking at me, and I looked right back at him. And if, you, if he hadn't have moved, I wouldn't have seen it. Can I tell you? That's how the devil is. Let me tell you something about your devil. As a matter of fact, you might be sitting beside one. Just, just look at your neighbor. I hope you're not the devil because the devil disguises himself. I wish I had a way. He disguises himself. And this is why we must be careful because he can disguise himself into his surroundings. This is what Jesus is teaching here in this sacred passage. I began to share this with you on last week that Jesus now taught several parables in chapter 13. As a matter of fact, chapter 13 is the beginning of the, par uh, the parabolic teaching of Jesus and a parable is nothing but an earthly story with a heavenly meaning, trying to get something over to the people of God. It is also called the parable of the weeds and we're known it as the parable of the wheat and the tare. And the theme of the message is that the kingdom of heaven is infiltrated with imposters who love to sow corruption. Yes, and Jesus is teaching, wow, the good man sowed good seeds in his field, uh -huh. an enemy came at night and sowed tares in the same field. Uh -huh. It was an enemy that done this. It was not the righteous that done this. It was an enemy that done this. And why did he do it? And what is the passage showing us what your enemy wants to do? Well, number one, it reminds us that sowing tares was the devil's work. All right, now. Sowing the tares was the devil's work. Secondly, sowing the tear was devious work. Satan's aim is to produce a race of people who completely hate God and all that he stands for. And can't you see it now? There are individuals being raised up, churches are being raised up, satanic activity is at an all-time high. That is what the devil is doing. He is raising up a group of people, especially young people, who refuse to listen to anything about God. They're more concerned about positive energy and Scientology and all these other ologies that are coming down the pipe, even on our college campuses. That's the reason why, saints, members, and friends, we must cover our young people. Because that's who the devil is after. He's after our young people. He, wants to, he tells us that sowing of the tab was not only devilish and deceit and devious, it was also deceptive. But the thing I like about it, sowing of the tear is defeated work. And here we have in the text I dealt with you last week on how the wheat and the tear were both planted together. Because note the text, the Bible says in verse number 24, another parable, put he forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And while men slept, look who showed up. His enemy came, sold tares, no, among the wheat and went his way. So we see the wheat and the tare both planted together. But notice now, we just don't see them planted together. We see them progressing together. They're progressing together. Because note verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then a pear appeared, the tares also. I taught you, whenever you read the Bible, slow down 
Because if you read too fast, you're going to miss something. In verse number 26, I see both the wheat and the tare progressing together. They're growing together. But notice when the tear is revealed. Uh huh. Notice when the tear manifests. The tear only manifests, catch this, when there's fruit evident. There it is right there. Brought forth fruit. Here you have the wheat, here you have the wheat now. It's starting to grow. The tear is growing, but the only way you can identify it is when it's bringing forth fruit. Can I tell you, every saved individual in this room has one purpose in your life, and that is to bear fruit. Amen. Will you help me preach so I feel just a little bit better on the day and tell your neighbor you are called to bear fruit? Amen. Wrong neighbor. They didn't come to talk to you. Find somebody in your region and tell them you are called to bear fruit. Look at verse number 8 of chapter 13. This is how we're called to bear fruit. Fruit, I told you. Last week, you got to be planted right. you got to have the right seed in you. Every seed is, not, is, is created to bear fruit. Look at verse 8 of chapter 13. But other fell on good ground. Talking about the seeds. The parable of the sower. He was sowing seed. And last week I shared with you, only one-fourth of the seed was good. <laughs> only one-fourth fell on good ground. But no, he says, but the other fell on good ground and brought, brought forth what? Fruit. Some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Now look at verse number 23 of the same passage. But he that received seed in good ground is he that what? Heareth the word and does what? There it is. You hear it, understand it, but here it is, do it. When you hear it, understand it, now you do it, look what happens. It which also beareth what? Fruit. And bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. God wants you and I to bear fruit. Matthew chapter 7. Look at verse number 17. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. You there? You don't have a Bible on the screen. Even so, every good tree does what? Uh-huh. But a corrupt tree does what? Uh-huh. Look at verse number 20. Wherefore, by their what? Uh -huh. He didn't say by your name, Nathan Jeter. He said by your fruit. I wish I had somebody read the Bible with me. We are called to bear fruit. Amen. And Jesus said in, in Matthew, in John chapter 15, verse 16, he said, you have not chosen me, I chose you. That I will ordain you, send you forth, but here it is, that you shall bear fruit, and that your fruit remain. If you are a fruit bearer, your fruit still will remain long after you go. Now, for some who may be asking, well, pastor, what kind of fruit ought to be evident? Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Am I helping anybody here? God wants us to bear fruit. Ain't about being a big building on the side of the road. God wants some fruit bearers in here. I wish I had somebody. Look, Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse number 22. Here it is. But the fruit, the evidence of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long Come on, help me preach it. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Let's read verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections 
and lust. Let's keep reading. If we live in the spirit, let us also what? Tell you that we got to bear some fruit. It's not in your shout. What's on your stand? I wish I had some. So, so, see, so God does not want us just to be light bearers. He calls me fruit bearer. And so, Reverend God, Reverend Wilson, when the wheat began to grow, the tares showed up. And the tear only showed up to try to mess with the fruit of the wheat. But let me tell you something. What's the difference between the wheat growing and the weed growing? You know what it is? Maturity. Somebody just shout maturity back at me. It wasn't until the wheat began to mature that the tear showed up. Come here. It isn't until you get your prayer life really on point. It's not until you get your worship where it really needs to be. It's not until you get your marriage some peace in the house. It's not until you got hell harmony on your job. That's when the hell shows up. But if you are mature, you'll know how to handle it. You ought not be surprised when you're maturing when the weeds show up. I wish I had somebody talk to me. Because listen, the only way that you can you could uh, be able to recognize a wheat and a tear, you couldn't do it while they were young, but you can do it when it started to mature. That's why in this season, folks tripping with you, you know why? Because you don't think the same way. There's some folk right now who cut not your circle. You know why? Because you ain't walking in the same way. And Amos, come here, Amos, help me preach it. How can two walk together except they be? Here it is. You couldn't tell the difference. But you know where the difference was found? Not in the stalk, in the head. Y'all missed it just that fact. It was not in the stalk of the wheat. The difference was found in the head. Will you point at somebody and tell me your thought process has a lot to do with this? How you think is what's going to make the difference, baby. Am I helping anybody in this building? It was in the head. Because listen, wheat gives grain, which is profitable. And the grain is gold in color. And the and the and the grain is used for making flour for baking purpose. In other words, the fruit of the wheat is in the head. And what's in your head gonna cause you to bear fruit or be fruitless? And the reason why many people are not bearing fruit is because they head ain't in the right place. You got your head on Terry, but not transformation. Y'all miss what I just said? You got your head on your boo and not your blessing. You trying to get, you, okay, you got your head on a hookup instead of getting hold of it. Ask your neighbor, where's your head at? Can I tell you, if Jacob was here, he could say amen, man. Even though Jacob was on the run from his brother Esau, the Bible says he got to a certain place on the run, and the Bible says he laid his head on a stone. Now, sometimes you have to lay your head in a hard place. But even when you are laying your head in a hard place, God will open up the heavens. Has anybody ever laid your head in a hard place, but because you were in a hard place, you saw God more clearly? Because the Bible says, Skibo, he saw a ladder with angels ascending. I wish I had somebody that can give God a praise that even though you had to go through a hard place, that's where you saw the Lord. Will you give somebody a similar high five and say, get your head together? Okay. It was in the head. It was in the head, where it was. And the tear showed up. The tear showed up. Now notice, the tear is called a bearded darnel. And this plant has black seeds. Yes, it does. It's got black seeds in there. Anything black represents darkness. Represents sin. Seeds of the bearded darnel were not good for human consumption. They cause nausea, dizziness, and can even cause death. 
if not separated from the wheat. Right. Oh, let me just put it out here. I'm going to get in trouble. That's all right. There's some people that you're around not good for human consumption. They make you nauseous. Okay. Okay. They just make you sick. Why y'all looking at me? Y'all know we all got some folk that we know. Thank you. You're going to tell the truth. Because listen, the only way you can distinguish righteousness from unrighteousness is in the thought process. Because no, like these two plants that took time to be able to distinguish one from another. This is why saints, catch this, we got to make sure our motives are right when it comes to working in the kingdom. Well, Because you can look right and do the right thing but have the wrong motive. You can, I told you last week, you can pass off as being right, but be dead wrong. You see, not everything or everyone has genuine intentions while they're working. So you got to make sure that you're sowing good seeds and not seeds of deception. So we see them being processed together, but only processed together. But I mean, they were progressing together, but now they're processed together. Look at verse 27. I like this. Look, look at the text. 20, verse 27. The Bible says that the men came and began to examine the field. And the servants say, uh, didn't you plant some good seed in, in this field? Where did these tares come from? Look, look at it. Basically. See, because the day of harvest had arrived and now the counterfeiters are being identified. The imposters are being revealed and the cover is being pulled off. That's what God doing in this season. Oh, yes he is. He's pulling the cover off to see who is for real and who is not. Who's counterfeit? Who's the imposter? And I like this. I, I like the servants because in verse 27 and 28, we see what the servants begin to say. And I like them. I, I, I like them because the servants had an attentiveness about them. Because the servants is something that we ought to do. They paid attention to what was going on in the field. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. You better pay attention to what's going on in your field. Y'all y'all quiet now. Y'all hear me on the virtual church? You better pay attention to what's going on around you. That means you better have an alertness. Amen. Because the servants, look at it. They were people that were bound to another in servitude. But what I really like about these servants, they were loyal to their master. Yes, they were. They were loyal. They were paying attention. And how they were paying attention is because they had their master spirit. Mm. Not everybody that comes to church got the master spirit. See, if you got your master spirit, you just ain't going to let everything be everything. Why are y'all looking at me like that today? If you have your master spirit, you just ain't going to let folks just do whatever and say it's all right. If you got your master spirit, you'll call wrong, wrong, and right, right. If you got your master spirit, you'll stand up when you're supposed to stand up. If you got your master spirit, they had their master spirit. And I like it because, no, they came out and they paying attention. They asked the master. They said, wait a minute, didn't you do the good thing? Because, listen, they knew the integrity of the land on they knew that every time the landowner went out in the field, he was always doing good. They knew he had planted some good seed. And here it was, they knew that the landowner, because of his integrity, because of his character, was always going to do the right thing. But there was something wrong. Because now, the field had been defiled. 
And so they just didn't have the master spirit and they just weren't attentive. This is what I like. They wanted to keep the field clean. Uh -huh. Oh God, give me some folk that want to keep the field clean. Instead of bringing mess in the field. I wish I had somebody. Ask your neighbor, are you helping to keep the field clean? See how quiet y'all get. Y'all ain't want to talk to your neighbor no more. Ask them, do you want to keep the field clean? Or are you bringing the tares in the field? They want to keep the field clean. Because they said, let's pull them up. I like that. Let's, 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 let's eradicate them. Let's get rid of them. Now, here it was. The servants had a zeal about them. They did, but they had a problem. And the problem was, they had the, they thought they had the right solution. They thought they had the right answer. But their reasoning and their method was wrong. They were wrong. Because they wanted to pull it up, but I still liked them because at least they had the zeal to want to keep it clean. Amen, somebody. You ought not just let anything go on in your house. Okay. You ought not just let anything go on in your house. And then, but more importantly, you ought not just let anything go on in this house. Amen. If you care about it. The, 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 you know, the, their heart was in the right place. And they wanted to pull it up. They said, listen, what will we do? Want us to gather them up? Get rid of them? Because I know that you planted a good field. And you planted a good harvest. Oh, servants, that's the way we ought to be. Attentive. Have our heart in the right place. Have a determination to keep wherever we are clean. But I like the master. The master had good wisdom. Because the master said, here's a man that had wisdom and sound judgment. I like the master. Look at verse 28. The master said, no, wait a minute. I know who did this. An enemy have done this. Calm down. Calm your spirit. An enemy have done this. But I tell you what you do. Verse 29. He said, let them grow. You know, if you pull up the wheat, you're going to pull the tares up too. Or vice versa. You pull the tares up, you're going to pull up the wheat. That's good wisdom. Now, what Jesus was not saying here, he was not saying that the church ought to just let any and everything go on. Amen. Because this was not so much an ecclesiastical context. What Jesus was making mention of was a worldly context. Because in church, we have to discipline when we have to. And there are some things we got to pull up. But before we pull it up, we got to use some good wisdom. As I stand in this pulpit, 21 years of pastoral ministry, my first few years of ministry, I made some terrible mistakes. Because I look back at it now. You know, you look at things differently through 21-year-old eyes than you do two-year-old eyes. Amen. When you mature. Amen. There were some things I wish I had just left alone. Because I pulled it up too fast. All right. All right. And because I pulled it up too fast in my zeal, I pulled up some good stuff. Right. I hurt some people that now I realize that I hurt because of my zeal. You see, God will give you wisdom and God will give you discernment of what to do, when to do, how to do. That we should just not do anything about it, but you got to wait the right time. And there's some things you just got to let grow together. I wish I had somebody. Got to use some good wisdom. Got to use some good sound judgment. And this man recognized who did it. He said, "An enemy have done this." Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, who you're fighting is not flesh and blood. Let me say it one more time. Who you are fighting is not the person you're sitting beside. What you are really dealing with is the spirit that's making the person sitting beside you do what they do. 
But what the devil wants us to do is to fight flesh and blood. Because if we fight flesh and blood, he keeps on doing what he's doing. Am I making sense this morning? You got to know that your enemy is the one that's doing it. So what you got to do is, is confront the spirit that's making them do what they do. He understood that an enemy had done this, but secondly, he knew what he was working with. This wasn't the first time he had dealt with weeds. Come here. This is not your first time having to deal with di diabolical deeds. This ain't the first time you have to deal with trouble. Why do we trip out when trouble comes? This ain't your first time you had to go through. I wish I had somebody. Unless you've been in a monastery, you ain't been around nobody. This ain't your first time having to deal with trouble. He knew what he was working with. And I like the master because he told the servants, he said, listen, don't you get all flipped out over these tasks. I tell you what you do, keep working. That's good wisdom. Listen, the devil wants you and I to quit ministry because of the weeds you got to deal with. But let me tell you, weeds are a part of it. And let me send this out. Ministry is your best antidote to your misery. Because misery is not, excuse me, ministry is not about you. It's about others. And what the devil does not want you preaching him, that's how it, what the devil does not want you to do is focus on others, but always focus on yourself. And as you're focusing on yourself, you're becoming more miserable because all you're doing is talking about your misery. But when you focus on others, help me, Jesus, now you're not worried about yourself, but you're helping somebody else. And is there anybody in the room ever want to go help somebody and you want to go encourage them, but you left encouraged? Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Oh. That's why God wouldn't let Jeremiah quit when Jeremiah was in chapter 20 in the pit. And he said, this is it. I put in my resignation. I've, I've, I've taken off my choir robe. I've closed up my Bible. I will no longer speak of his name. And God said, okay. I hear you crying, Jeremiah. I hear you whining. I hear you fussing, but let me give you a dose more of my spirit. And Jeremiah was so full, by the end of the day, he said, boy, I tell you what, it's like fire shut up in my bone. I am not the only one in the room that quit, but came back back on Monday morning. Amen. Amen. Right, look, okay, let me talk to you. They, have you ever just said, I ain't going back over there no more. I ain't doing it no more. I ain't doing nothing else for nobody, but God messed with your spirit enough. And when you did it, you felt a whole, you had a whole different perspective. Remind your neighbor, ministry is the antidote to your misery. Yes, it is. Because look, I like this. The master wouldn't let him quit. The master didn't make an excuse because Tad, he could have said, well, yes, and Tad, I think y'all just going home. He said, no, keep working. Oh, boy, there it is. Keep working. You've been hired to work in the field. Don't worry about Ted. Don't worry about the wings. Uh -huh. Keep on doing what you got to do. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brother, here it is. Be ye what? And what? Keep reading. Stop, 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 stop. You, you ran past the stop sign. Note the word always. Somebody just shout always. Always is always. That means you continue to keep doing what God called you to do. Always abounding in what? Why? Will you just give somebody, come on, touch them, give somebody a high five and tell them, keep on working, baby. It's going to pay off after a while. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare stop. I got to stop. I got to quit. Look at them. The master said, no, I know what I'm dealing with here. Yes, sir. See, God don't want us to be a novice. That's right. No, he wants you to know what you're working with. But then he begins to tell them and tells us today, 
When a person shows you their hand, their personality, believe them. But God allowed them to be revealed so you know how to deal with them. That don't mean you got to stop serving them. Keep on working. Oh, you can't pull up stuff because that's God's business. We got to be careful of acting too swiftly in judging or even with discipline because we can do more harm than good. John MacArthur says, the church is called to preach and teach against sin and all unrighteousness. But by doing that, its purpose is not to judge, but to win souls. Amen. Not to punish, but to convert sons of the evil one into sons of the king. Here it is. Jesus teaching this parable, Joe Wilson says, don't worry about them. Let them grow together. Don't pull them up. Leave them alone. Because when the harvest come, when the day of reckoning shall come, when the time comes, when I will come back, he says, I will say to the reapers, gather you together, first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into the barn. Can I tell you, as I leave you here, there's two promised destinations. Here the master tells the servant, don't worry about the task, but keep on working. Because the time will come when the harvest will do the separate. Uh, while the tares are getting by now. There are so many folk laughing at the church now. There are so many folk putting down preachers now. There are so many folk who are criticizing Christians now. There are those who would rather go to the casino than come to the sanctuary. There are so many those who would play the lottery rather than play their tithe. There are so many folk that would rather laugh at you and call you holy roller and call you old fashioned old fogey. But that's all right, child of God. You keep on letting them laugh. You keep on letting them snarl and you keep on letting them roll their eyes because I thank the Lord that what my Bible says here, they will not get away long. Go and tell your neighbor today, they won't get a bite get by for long because I heard y'all help me close it till I feel better here. I heard Psalm 37 verse number 1 and 2 it says fret not thyself because of evil doers neither be thy envious neither of the works of love iniquity for their souls be cut down and wither like the green herb look at verse number 9 it says evil doers shall be cut off but those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth for yet a little while the wicked shall not be a though that does that did to consider his place and shall not be. Verse number 12. The wicked plot against the just and gnashes against him with his teeth. But the Lord shall laugh at him for he seeth that his day is come. Go ahead on and tell your neighbor the Christians and God will get the last laugh. Yes, they will. Those who got false religion, those who got deceptive practices, those who've been deceived, those who make it hard for the saints to progress and prosper, will be burned in the principal fire. I get happy about that, because there are so many folk that I see doing wrong, there are so many folk that are laughing at God's word, but my Bible tells me, don't you worry about it, you keep on preaching, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Go on and tell your neighbor, that's what we got to do. So let them go on and dance on the dance floor. Let them go on and shake their shit. Let them go on and do what they want to do. Because time, time will show them come to an end. One of these old days when the Lord shall crack the sky. One of the old days when he comes back on a white horse. He's coming back to explain what he is. And is there anybody in here waiting on that day? The Bible says here, yeah, first gather the tares and burn them. But for 
decision today. I want to have the right things in my head. Because that's the difference. Is in your maturity or your immaturity. Come to Jesus right now. All we have is Jesus. That's all we come to offer you is Jesus Christ. And will you come today and give the Lord your heart? Will you do that? Praise Him if you'll bless us. If you will.
look at the external, but you see every part of all of us. Help us to have the right motive, the right intention. Help us. Because on that day of reckoning, on that day of judgment, we don't want to be cast away. We don't want to stand beside you, in front of you, and hear you say, Lord, Lord, we've done great works, we've done this, we've done that. All they have you say is Martha. to God with all of our being in the company of the upright. Let us honor God for the blessings and goodness we have received. Three. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. The one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Responding to God's bountiful gifts to us in Christ, we have the opportunity to share out of our abundance. Three. Let's read all together. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering. Come before him. Do good and share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. How many of y'all received that word for yourself? Ephesus, come on. Come on, Ephesus ministry. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Oh, I'm happy. I feel all right here. Hallelujah. If you have your offering ready, you lift that toward the Lord today. Bless this Thank you, God. We love you. We bless you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Come on, musicians. Give us some good march music. We took outside aisle. Will you please stand? All those on the outside aisle, will you please stand? Face the direction of the usher. Amen. Bring the tide to the store.